Hi, my name is Kerry Horsley. I'm the Head of Governance, Risk and Compliance at Prudential. And today I'm going to be talking about conflicts of interest. No matter what the value proposition that your asset manager may have, it has to include keeping your money safe. And there are a number of points in any financial transaction where criminals can take advantage of us, as well as the controls inside the asset manager. That's not necessarily where I want to focus today. Where I want to focus today is on the so-called manufacturing arm inside the asset manager where the investment decisions are made and implemented, the portfolio management function. And I only want to focus on one particular part of that, conflicts of interest. We've got legislative prohibitions in South Africa that prevent any steward, an asset manager, a portfolio manager, whoever's running your money, from acting in conflict of interest with the clients. And these prohibitions are broad. They've existed in our common law for generations. And essentially what they say is that when we are acting as a steward, as a fiduciary, looking after somebody else's money, we need to do so exclusively in the interests of our clients, free from bias and completely objective. Any advice that we give and any actions that we take uh, need to be objective and in the interests of our clients. In the last two or three years, there's been a piece of regulation that has drawn the attention of the greater financial services industry. And the focus, in my view, has tended to be on things like sporting events, entertainment, uh, lavish hospitality, gifts, those sort of things. And rightfully so, I think. It's absolutely appropriate that the entire yeah, investment chain from bank, asset manager, insurance company, all the way through to the pension fund trustees, the pension funds, the medical aids, and to the end investor, the unit trust investor, the policy holder, that that entire value chain is free from conflicts of interest, that the advice that we get, that the advice that we receive, and that the services that we receive from all these suppliers is done in our best interests and free from considerations of commercial uh, profits and free from considerations of something as completely silly as a hard to get by ticket to a rugby game, along with the hard sell networking that goes along with that. Um, and I think that is an important part of how this industry is transforming. But of more interest to me is the structural integrity inside asset managers, the structures that help prevent conflicts of interest from manifesting, the structures that help us ensure that the actions that we take as asset managers are in the interests of our clients and exclusively in the interests of our clients. In the last couple of months, there's been a case that's been popping up in the media where an asset manager is alleged to have traded its own assets, in other words, the assets that it owns in its proprietary capacity, its, its own profits, if you will, with its client through an associated stockbroker. And in the process, the client, who was a pension fund, is alleged to have lost 349 million rands worth of pension and money. So because this case hasn't yet found its way into any court processes, I'm going to assume that there's no malignant intent behind this. I'm going to assume that this was error, that this was failings in control as opposed to some kind of uh, malignant or malicious intent. No asset manager should be trading its own assets with its clients. Not only is that a legal prohibition, it's an obvious prohibition. It's an obvious opportunity for a conflict of interest to manifest. It's an obvious opportunity to keep the really high performing assets on our own balance sheet and put the lousy assets into our client's portfolio. It's an obvious opportunity to price our services with the, with the group interest at heart, with the group services at heart. It's an obvious opportunity uh, to forget that our duty of care belongs to our clients. There's many, many times where um, we defend as an industry having an associated stockbroker living in the same stable as an asset manager. The arguments that are given are that um, we can find the right lines for our clients, that we can price our services appropriately for our clients, in other words, our stockbroking services appropriately for our clients. We can hold assets on our own balance sheet until they are ripe or mature enough to go into the funds. 
Most traditional asset managers will not trade through an associated stockbroker. They will only trade through an independent stockbroker, an independent member of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, for the very reasons we've mentioned around the conflicts of interest, the opportunity to trade assets with your clients, the opportunity for people to be turning the other way when we're setting the prices and charging our clients um, for the stockbroking services. Anyway, that's one of the things that we focus on all the time at Prudential, is that we can stumble in our day-to-day -day as humans, but it's, in the, it's the structures that prevent us from making those kinds of mistakes that we've spoken about today, and it's hopefully in those structures that we hold ourselves accountable. I want to thank you for letting me be here today and talk about a topic that I find incredibly interesting. Um, and to assure you that at Prudential, we have teams of people that think about this all the time um, and are very mindful of how we structure our business and how we have our clients at the center of what we are doing. And that part of our value proposition is keeping client money safe.